Welcome back to the Print On Demand cast. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking to a special guest about some advanced tax strategies for your POD business. All right, you guys ready? Let's get into it. Radical. Welcome to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. Each week, join the gnarly Travis and Josiah as they provide insight into the print on demand industry and equip you with the totally tubular tools, advice, and strategies you need to achieve success and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Now on to this week's totally tubular show. Well, hey, everybody. Um, Welcome back to the Print on Demand cast. As you can tell, I'm solo this week. Josiah and I couldn't make our schedules sync up. However, I do have a really, really cool guest that um, is going to be joining me. And so since I don't have a whole lot to say, there's, you know, it's not a lot of fun to just hear me talk about my week unless Josiah is actually asking me. So I'm just going to get right into it. We're going to jump into the uh, main event of the episode, which uh, is an interview with a newly acquired friend, <laughs> uh, Adam Shibley of Podcasting Business School. Adam is a full-time podcaster, um, podcasting business consultant, and the host of the top 100 ranked entrepreneurship podcast, Podcasting Business School. Adam helps service providers learn how to leverage their podcasts to build an online business and to get more clients. So, Print On Demand cast, help me welcome to the stage Adam Shibley. Adam, welcome to the Print On Demand cast. Oh my God, Travis. I, as someone who grew up in the, the 80s and 90s, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just loving the flavor. I'm loving the flavor right now. The Totally tubular, man. This is totally great. I, tubular. I appreciate you having me on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I told everybody at the top of the show that we're going to be talking about taxes, and then I introduced you as this podcasting guy. So um, I just want to kind of peel back the curtain for everybody. And if you haven't figured it out by now, Adam's actually, I've actually hired Adam as a consultant to help me and Josiah kind of with some of the business portions of the podcasting business school. But as, as it would, uh, obviously because he's doing podcasting business school, he's got a podcast. And so I listened to that a lot and he did a show recently on taxes that I thought, man, this is really good information. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have, this is good information to have. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get Adam on the show because he doesn't know, you know a lot about print on demand, but he does know a lot about taxes. So um, that's kind of, I guess that's the backstory. And uh, Adam, really do appreciate having you on. Um, before we get into the meat and potatoes, though, as Josiah likes to say, um, I, I did tell Adam that he's got to bring a dad joke. So with that, it is time for the weekly dad joke. Time for the weekly dad joke. All right. So All right, uh, hit it. You know, I know you were worried like I'm putting you on the spot. Are you going to have a dad joke? And really only the issue for me was which one to tell. Which <laughs> shall I tell? Because I'm not only a dad, I'm also a meathead. Uh, I'm, I'm a gym goer. Mm -hmm. So like we can let's combo that up a little bit. So one of my favorite meathead slash dad jokes to tell is uh i'll give you an example i had a client that she was a uh, in her 70s and she served uh lunch at a local prison it's like she volunteered at a local prison this isn't part of the joke by the way it sounds like i'm like leading <laughs> not part of the joke i'm just giving you an example of when to tell this okay. so uh her name was sue and i taught sue this joke so I want you to imagine Sue, the 70 year old lunch lady walking into a prison and telling this joke. Uh, and it went over really well. So she walks into the prison. She's serving up lunch and she goes, hey, guys, um, do you guys know any good local veterinarians? And then you just shut up and, and they're like making recommendations and things like that. And then she rolls up her sleeve, flexes her arm and goes, thanks. I got some pretty sick pythons over here. And... <laughs> So 70 year old Sue, the lunch lady in the prison has the prisoners freaking dying laughing when she says that she needed a veterinarian because she has sick pythons. And um, yeah, that's, that's a great dad joke right there. I love it. I love it, man. That's awesome. Um, all right. Our, our dad joke, front of man cast dad joke this week, not as cool, not as much of a backstory. Which side of the tree 
has more branches. The outside. Yeah. I'm dying over here. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, you guys can use those. Um, those are free. Those are free of charge. Uh, use them. Tell us how they go. See how many groans you can get with those terrible, terrible dad jokes. But that means they're awesome because that's the thing about that's dad jokes. Point. Yeah. All right. So let's get into this thing. Um, I always ask people like, what's their print on demand story? And since you're not actually in print on demand, but you are in business and I know, I know a lot about your back, well, some about your background. Um, can you just share like how you got into business and how you eventually got into podcasting and like helping people with podcasts? Yeah, man. So, uh, I, my entrepreneurial origin origin story, uh, came from a brick and mortar uh, weight loss business. So I, I, mm -hmm. I kind of took advantage of the, the 2009 ish to 2012 ish, uh, bootcamp fitness craze. I was doing personal training at the time, decided to open mm -hmm. up my own facility and did really well with it. And, uh, you know, my background with weight loss started my own journey. I lost over hundred pounds and started teaching other people how to do it. So it's pretty cool. A little vibe in there helped a lot of people. And I, decided to start podcasting uh, because I wanted to expand my reach into the online space. I'm like, I really think I could develop online courses and programs and help even more people than just the people I'm helping in my facility. Mm -hmm. So in 2015, launched a weight loss show. Uh, it's called the Million Pound Mission Podcast. Pretty cool vibe in there. Just taught people what I knew. We actually had like a ticker on my website where if people listened to the show and took some advice and lost seven pounds, they could go and donate their weight loss on my website and they would see the ticker go up because we were actually trying to <laughs> produce a million pounds of weight loss. Uh, wow. So that was pretty cool. It's kind of like the anti McDonald's sign where McDonald's mm -hmm. has the over whatever billion served. And so we were kind of competing with that. So uh, we did that, got into podcasting. Uh, it was a rough journey up front because I didn't know any podcasters and I knew nothing about podcasting knew nothing about online business, knew nothing about email list building, social media. I started from zero across the board hmm. and it took about three years to really learn all of it. And then I started making a little bit of money and eventually started making a lot of money to where I replaced my income, sold my gym in December of 2019. So wow, perfect December timing. December of 2019, <laughs> my spotty senses were tingling. Uh, this is a good time to sell before your gym is worth zero. Yeah. And uh, sold it and did really well with that and <laughs> went full time with my my podcasting business school brand. And that's I've been a full time podcaster focusing on helping people learn how to podcast and get clients from their podcast uh, since then. Yeah, I, I, you know, have to admit, like having you sit backstage while I did that whole intro thing, I was just like, oh, God, he's he's totally judging me. I'm doing a terrible job, you know, so um, you don't have to tell me all the things i did wrong now we'll wait till after uh, i mean it was it was at least mediocre it wasn't terrible <laughs> thanks for that vote of confidence adam appreciate that <laughs> all right so um obviously this is a print on demand show but it's also a business show you know we talk about how to do print on demand business and one of the things that you have to do in business any kind of business is you have to deal with taxes and um it's not just business taxes necessarily. And obviously it depends on how your actual business is structured. If it's a DBA, you're just, you know, a sole proprietor doing business as, um, or if you've actually created an S corp, there's different like tax advantages to that. And, um, we don't, I don't know how much we're going to get into now, but I do remember like listening to this. It was right before tax day. And obviously here we are like a, a month after tax day. So you're all like, why are you doing this now? Well, tax planning is always a good idea. And so I thought, let's have Adam on because he's really done a lot of research and his show is really good on this thing. And we can even drop a link to that show in the show notes if you guys want to listen to that. But basically, I just asked him to regurgitate it all here so you don't have to listen to his show. Um, <laughs> but uh, but so, Adam, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and dig into that. What... Um, so what are some of the current tax strategies that you're using that you think could be beneficial to some of the listeners to the print on demand cast? Yeah. And 
you know, of course, before we even get into that, just to restate what Travis said, like, I'm not a tax expert, um, mm, right. but, I am, I, but I am a tax nerd and <laughs> I obsess over this stuff because the, I was that guy first year as a personal trainer. I have no idea what I'm doing business wise. And then but I do need to, I know like I need to turn in and do taxes. So I find an accountant and he's like, you owe $8,000. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Oh. Where do I, where is this coming from? How am I giving you this money? I used all of this money. <laughs> that started my journey on, uh, I can't spend all my money on protein shakes. I have to uh, <laughs> save some of this back and, and pay taxes and become strategic. So that kind of kicked me off on like, okay, how do I optimize? And just year after year, I try to pick up some strategies and ideas. But again, mm -hmm. the conversation we're having here today, I'm not an expert. You're not an expert. Right. For people that are interested in this and, you know, this is for educational purposes only. Um, but I think the place where I always start when I talk about, you know, entrepreneurs and online business owners uh, with tax strategy is with a health savings account. That's that's my, my favorite, mm -hmm. super easy uh, tool that, that I use. Uh, so with a health savings account, this is for somebody that has a high deductible uh, health uh, uh, insurance plan to where mm -hmm. like I used my wife's physical therapist. We, we used to you know, use her insurance and just kind of she that that was our insurance strategy. But eventually she's like, I want to back down on my hours. My online business is doing really well. I'm like, cool, but we're going to be below the threshold for insurance. So we had to buy our own marketplace insurance. And that's what kicked this right. whole thing off. And then I found out like health savings accounts are awesome. Because uh, in 2024, you can contribute $8,300 to this thing. And yeah. the money that you put in, you put in $8,300, that is coming off of your uh, income that can be taxed. So, you know, if you're making a hundred grand, all of a sudden your uh, taxable income is a hundred grand minus 8,300. So, you know, 91,700 or whatever. So mm -hmm. now that, that brings down our, our, the money that we're taxed on, which is great. So it's, it's no tax going in, but also there's no tax on the growth and there's no tax as it comes out. So this is the only mm -hmm. vehicle where there's it, you get the tax deduction. Yeah. Growth is tax free. And when you take it out, it's tax free. So it's different than even like an IRA or a Roth, yes. which are, are they're taxed on one of those two things. Yeah. yeah you got to pick exactly. Yeah. That's super so. Cool. This and this is I've got a very interesting strategy around this. So we've had an HSA for the last three years. My goal mm -hmm. is to max it out every single year, but not spend any of it. So mm -hmm. and, and my my theory around this and something I, I didn't come up with this um, is that I pay for my medical expenses out of pocket and I track it all and I keep receipts. So I'm, so I'm obviously paying for medical. I go to the dentist, like my yeah. son's getting Invisalign. He's 13. Mm -hmm. Got my wife's freaking teeth genetics. They're all jacked up. They're like they're British <laughs> or something. And, <laughs> and so he's got to do Invisalign. It's $5,000. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, England. Uh, we just lost all of our all English the UK listeners. listeners. Thanks, I love thanks Adam. I love people from the UK. They know their teeth are jacked up. It's all right. So um, they, they embrace that. So we got to pay five grand for this. Mm -hmm. So I pay that out of pocket. Keep the receipt because with the health savings account, you can cash that receipt in any time in the future. So mm -hmm. I'm putting money in because we got to remember the growth isn't taxed. Right. Right. So I'm saving onto that receipt, paying for it out of my pocket now letting all this money that I'm putting in every year, maxing it out, grow and grow and grow. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I invest in broad-based index funds. I, I do Vanguard, VTI, if people want to know exactly what I invest in. Mm -hmm. And on average, that whatever's in there is going to double about every eight to nine years. So that growth basically is paying for my current medical expenses, plus the original amount that I put in there. So it's, I basically got a retirement fund that, once mm. I am retired, I can cash in that $5,000 receipt mm -hmm. and just get that money right back in my pocket. But mm. it, that's already gr doubled or tripled yeah. in value as it sat there. Right. So that's my strategy. And, and it's like, that's awesome. You got to be real consistent with it. You got to keep receipts. 
and mm-hmm. you got to track it all. But once you get that system down, like I, I do a new expense. All right, take a picture of it, scan it, put it in my Evernote file. Good to go. Pay it. And then just let her grow. So I keep a separate yeah. account, uh, a cash based account and like ally uh, where I just keep money in there for medical current medical expenses. And that mm-hmm. way, all my medical expenses are coming out of that anyway. So it's, it's kind of organized within that as well. So, so, um, are, so are you not using your actual insurance? at all because you would have to then use the hsa is that how it works i'm using insurance like we turn in things through insurance Uh but if i wanted to we could pay those bills through the hsa so your 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 insurance and your hsa are two separate entities that's what Um, i was asking yeah okay that makes sense yeah so 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 yeah so the things come in you run it through the insurance so you're just paying your deductible but you're paying your deductible out of pocket out of pocket, and then what right. uh, yeah and every so you're paying all of your deductibles every year out of pocket plus you're do, or, uh, contributing eight thousand three hundred dollars to your hsa savings account or yep. i guess that's your health savings account yep. and then saving those receipts so when you're 65 years old or whatever you can take out five thousand dollars here ten thousand dollars here however much medical that you've spent over that time because you're leaving it in for it to double to triple however long you know you leave it in there for um that's that's super cool i didn't realize it that it wasn't taxed on either side that's yeah super cool yeah so the way right, I that's the first it, strategy right yeah i mean that so that five thousand dollar invisalign could turn into fifteen thousand dollars when i let it sit mm-hmm. there i can pull out the original 5k just as like a paycheck and use it to buy groceries or whatever when I'm old and gray. Mm-hmm. But that extra 10,000 when it grew, that's going to fund like when I actually, I can start using this when I am retired to pay all my medical expenses. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, yeah. it's there for that as well. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know people might ask um, this question, but the, the platform I use for my HSA is called lively.me. It's L I V E L Y dot me. Um, okay. That's, they've got a, it's really easy to, to use and, connected to an investment platform and everything. So that, that works really well. I'm taking notes so I can put that in the, uh, lively. The show notes. Lively. Me. So when you, if you take out the HSA, uh, money and it, and you don't have a receipt or an existing or like an actual bill, you pay your regular income tax on it. So it's, it's like an IRA in that way. Yeah. Correct. If, if yeah. you didn't have medical bills or, uh, you know, or something like that, and you still needed to access that money, you would just pay re- whatever your regular income tax is on it Correct. when you take it out. Okay. Just yep. making sure. Got it. Yep. Yeah. As far as I know. And then, you know, of course, rules can change on all this stuff. That's right. The, that's the tricky thing. <laughs> um, so yeah. So then uh, that's, that's kind of a home run base strategy mm-hmm. that I, I always work to build that contribution first as I'm like, and mm-hmm. just another kind of pro tip, like I use the profit first system. That's a, a great book. You guys should, should uh, check it out. Mike uh, McCallowitz. Mike McCallowitz. Mm-hmm. Good luck spelling McCallowitz. Um, but it's it'll be in the show first. notes. <laughs> profit first. And, but Mike has all these different categories within profit first. And one of them is profit. But I changed the profit category into retirement because mm. uh, so I have a certain percentage of every dollar that runs through my business that I put away towards funding all these retirement funds, which I count HSA as that because I am using yeah. it as a retirement fund. So some, so as that money comes through, this is the thing I dump that money into first until we get to 8,300. Then we move to my second thing, which is a traditional IRA. Um, okay. So a 2024 traditional IRA, you can contribute up to $7,000. And the reason I choose traditional personally over a Roth is that right now my business is doing really well and I want mm. tax deduction up front. And right. I, can, I can control my withdrawal later on, especially with things like this HSA. I can go, okay, I can withdraw from my IRA because it will be taxed upon withdrawal right. up to the amount that it's like up past the right at the standard deduction. So for a couple, yep. it's like 24,000, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm still not going to get taxed on that. And then if I need more on top of that, I take it out of my HSA and start turning in receipts. And that's not exactly that's not, deducted either or not uh, taxed either so that's kind of my my strategy there but the traditional ira uh, is a great vehicle now if you have children making money this was advice that i got 
like my son's 13 and I talked to a tax person and they're like, you should set them up with a Roth because they aren't making enough money to get taxed up front. Right. Yeah. Like if, exactly. if your kid makes $5,000 mowing lawns, put that in a Roth because mm -hmm. he won't get taxed up front and then the growth and the, the withdrawal won't be taxed rate. either. Yeah. So my, my kind of goal with, with my kids is like, let's, you know, probably really fund a Roth as often as possible, you know, until they're basically in college or, or earning enough money to be taxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, switch, switch over. So one, uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a Roth if you'd rather do that, but this is just kind of me mm -hmm. thinking strategically. It, yeah. It's like, it really is like, where are you at in your, uh, in your deductions? You know, what is your taxable income? You know, we have, you know, we have five kids. So for a lot of years we've done Roths because our taxable income is so low. We're in a very yeah. low tax bracket, you know, but if you're in a higher tax bracket, you're going to be paying now. And the idea is that when you retire, you'll be in a lower tax bracket when you have to take out that money. So yep. get the savings now if you need them. Um, because when you retire, you know, you're going to be taxed on your social security and that's about it, you know, unless you take a, another job or whatever. And so just, you know, take that, uh, pay the tax when it's going to make the most sense for you, yeah. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. And being strategic. And I mean, you're ahead of the game just by saving for retirement period. Um, so that that's important and mm -hmm. having a, a game plan around that. But yeah, thinking about when you're going to be in a lower tax tax bracket, whether it's now or in heading towards retirement, that, that is how you kind of make that call between the Roth or the traditional. Um, now the, the third strategy is kind of my, my, my core of tax planning is uh, the solo 401k. So a lot of people that have worked corporate jobs uh, know what a 401k is. If you are you've got an LLC, uh, an S corp, you can have a solo 401k. And the cool thing about a solo 401k, like people, other options in this space would be like a SEP, an SEP, IRA. Mm -hmm. And I don't know all the details on those, but I know that I've chosen the solo 401k because you can make contributions as the employee and the employer, which mm -hmm. is unique. So as the employee, I can contribute up to $23,000 of this thing uh, up front as the as the employee now the only stipulation and again rules can change is that you can't make eighteen thousand dollars and contribute twenty three thousand dollars you right. can't you can't contribute over the amount that you are earning that year from your business so if you make 100k and you can you can contribute 23k uh, as the employee and um then that's $23,000 off of the taxable income, which is fantastic. Right. And it's going towards retirement. Um, then the employer contribution is something in the 20 to 25%. It's always kind of shifting around. Uh, let's say 22%. Maybe it's 25%. Anyway, it's in that realm. You can look it up. Mm -hmm. uh, you can Google it. But 20-ish percent of your overall uh, taxable revenue you can be contributed by the business as an employer contribution. So you make hundred K you can contribute around 20, 25 ish to, to the employee. Yes. To the, the solo 401k. Right. So the combined max total is $69,000 potentially wow. in this. So you can really have these large contributions. If you're really looking to get ahead on retirement, uh, and get and lower your taxable income now, uh, this is a great strategy to do it. So that's kind of the third thing that I fill up. Um, and I went through Vanguard now, on that and just kind of kept it simple. Now, just to clarify, you can't do this if you're, um, if your company is a DBA or a sole, if you're a sole proprietor, because you don't, you can't have an employee as a sole proprietor. You have to be an S corp or an LLC to, to have an employee that you can set this up. Is that correct? Yes. You gotta be, uh, you need to be an LLC or an S corp to, to be able to do this. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yep. yep. That makes sense. So, cool. and then that's kind of the, the fourth thing to think about is where do you need to be? Should you be an S corp? Should you be an mm -hmm. LLC? And you can be an LLC that files at, I mean, an S corp is a tax status designation. 
an LLC is like a legal entity. So they're two different things. So it's mm -hmm. not like one or the other. Um, most people have an LLC and they get file and they would file as an S corp. But that's that's a, a conversation you need to have with your tax, you know, planner, tax prep person, yeah. and see what makes the most sense there. Um, yeah, yeah. That but then, sense. so there were a couple of things that uh, I talked about in the episode that that you referenced that were new that really intrigued me that I'm already working on implementing this year shall we move to those or do you want to yeah yeah let's jump in that sounds okay. awesome so i listened to this podcast called uh, small business tax savings uh great show mike jezoshek and he's always talking about this thing called the augusta rule and this blew my oh, freaking yeah. mind this blew this my mind super cool so um you have to have an s corp to do this you cannot do this as an llc so something to keep in mind um but basically the augusta rule is named after uh augusta georgia which is where the masters golf tournament is is at so they were they came up with this rule because the masters golf tournament is super popular a lot of people come in and want to do like airbnb and rent a house and mm -hmm. just during that weekend and they can charge a ton of money for doing this and they were getting taxed really heavily from these like weekend or three-day home rentals so they came up with this rule that it's called the Augusta rule that says uh, you can uh, charge your business fair market value rent for up to 14 days and you can accept payment tax free. So basically the, the rule is that's not anything to do with renting it to your own business. There's a, a separate strategy around that, but they said you can rent your own home. It's going to be fair market value for up to 14 days and it's tax free. So if people wanted to visit St. Louis where I'm at and they want to rent my house, I can rent it out for up to 14 days and not have to pay any taxes on those on that income. The business tax hack for this is renting your house to your business, to your S Corp mm -hmm. for 14 days. But yeah, and again, you have to charge fair market value and that's you can write that entire thing off and that income is also tax free so you get the tax deduction from the expense on your business mm -hmm. and the income is tax free so let's say fair market value is a thousand dollars a day and for renting your home and but you actually have to do something there so maybe you do a corporate retreat or you do mm -hmm. a mastermind or you bring some people in and you're doing a whole bunch of content filming or you know, social media mm -hmm. clips or, you know, you host clients and do VIP days or something like that. The only stipulation is you, it can't involve you. If you already deduct a home office, this has to be outside of your home office. So like with me and my, in my podcast layer, this is my home office. Anything done with this Augusta rule deal, it, I can't be having clients inside my home office doing that. It's got to be like in the kitchen, in the basement, in the patio, Mm -hmm. So you gotta be using the house, the whole house, right? Pretty much. Um, so yeah, like th there is an opportunity here. Uh, and again, it's, it's unique because the business writes it off as an expense and the income mm -hmm. is tax free. So if you do this for a thousand dollars per day, 14 days, you just paid yourself $14,000 tax free, which is awesome. And that $14,000 bill came off of your uh, taxable income for the business bonus. Right. Makes sense. Super cool. Again, can't do it unless you're an S corp because uh, DBA is taxed as an individual, and so there's no business expense to write off Correct. Um, with a DBA or sole proprietorship. So the this, the S corp actually makes you have to file as you have to file as your your personal taxes and an S corp. So you literally have two tax returns you got to do when you become yeah. a tech, an S corp, which is something that I don't know if a lot of people know, but the, the benefit of, of the S corp and I'll just, um, I think I've talked about this a little bit, but one of the benefits, again, not a tax, just tax nerd, just, yeah, not an expert. It's not advice, just some things that made sense to me. But, um, if you, if you get a hundred thousand dollars of income, um, you can write off whatever, you know, of your cost of goods and your expenses and all of that stuff. And then whatever left is left over in your business, you have to pay your regular income tax on that. If you are an S corp, 
you you will pay yourself a salary. So maybe if you had sixty thousand dollars worth of income, you only pay yourself twenty five thousand or twenty or thirty or whatever's you know a reasonable salary for running that business. That's tax. The thirty thousand is taxed at your regular income rate, which is significantly higher than the corporate tax rate for your S corp, which the other thirty thousand dollars is going to get taxed at. So you're basically saving a crap ton of money by becoming an S corp. S corp. But again, you have to file two tax returns. It's a little bit different. Um, like Adam said, see your CPA and see if it's right for you. I do remember though, Adam, you you had. Uh, you had like an estimate of what you need to be bringing in. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what that number was. You, you share that. It's, yeah. It's $50,000 in profit. So somebody much okay. smarter than me said, if your <laughs> business is profiting 50 K or more, you should take a hard look at an S corp. Um, and, and the, the key that you hit there, Travis is like, you got to nail that reasonable income. Cause if you mm -hmm. are like, yes, my reasonable income is 14 K and then I make, 500 K like you're going to, you're <laughs> going to get dinged. Like just expect the IRS to show up. Um, right. but if you are, you know, pulling in a hundred and you, you list 60 as your, as your reasonable income, that's, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah. so like, that's something that, uh, you, again, got to talk to a pro about, but yeah, if you're profiting over 50 K you need to do some due diligence on potentially going to the S corp route. Yeah. Cool. Was there one more strategy you had? Oh yeah. And you can kind of combo them up a little bit with this, this Augusta rule. So the last one is paying your kids, making your kids. Okay. <laughs> and it has to be your direct descendant children. So this doesn't work for like grandkids or cousins mm -hmm. or anything. It's not just family. It's your children. So, um, in 2024, you can pay your children up to $14,600 tax-free. And obviously you get to write that off as a, uh, uh, tax uh, expense for your business. Expense for your business. Right. And you know, and you funnel that money to them. No. So can, but, can you do this? At, uh, I'm sorry before, to interrupt, but do you, can you do this as a, uh, sole proprietor? You can do, you, do you know, as far as I know, anyone can do this. Okay. Cool. Um, no, yeah. Check with board. your CPA. <laughs> Yeah, check with your CPA. But as far as I, I'm guess, I'm guessing, but uh, as far as I know, as far as I've heard, anybody can do this. Um, because really, it's about them. Because it's them as an individual. Fourteen thousand six hundred is the uh, standard deduction for a single person. You know, uh, filing. I guess so. Boom. We, we're paying them that amount. That way, they're not having to pay taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you got to have a legit like bank account set up for them. You need to have like a job description. So if the IRS comes calling, hmm. you can't be like, well, they go over and they, they sweep my office for $14,000 or something like that. <laughs> but like being in the online space, my kids help me with my Instagram videos all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Doing, doing B roll stuff. My, my third grade daughter really loves doing it. Um, you know, podcast editing, social media creation, you know, the, I remember my son did kindergarten graduation. They all walk up there and he's 13 now. So it's been a while. So it's probably even, <laughs> even more prevalent now, but they all walk up there and they say what they want to be when they grow up. And like 90% of them are like, I want to be a YouTuber. You know, like, like yeah. that's all, that's all they want to do. <laughs> so they're very, these, these youths that we're rearing, they're all really interested in social media, online personalities and stuff like that. So like my son and I are going to start a podcast this summer and I can compensate him for his efforts via this mm -hmm. avenue up to 14,600. And the way I'm looking at it is, you know, obviously you could take advantage of this a little bit because I don't really know how much the IRS looks at that bank account and what we're doing with that. Like, could I go and buy my own groceries? You probably could, you know, mm. Uh, again, right. not advice, not saying let's, let's go out and do this. <laughs> but I'm like, I, I doubt that they're going out and looking at that, but I'm like, I spend a crap load of money on my kid. And mm -hmm. so like, we just signed him up for football and it was like $400 that comes out of that account. So all the kid expenses can be paid for by quote unquote him mm -hmm. in his bank account. And I'm and the key thing is I'm getting that tax deduction. Like I'm, I'm, I'm lowering my taxable income. I'm paying right. myself 
just by creating the separate bank account. He does legit things for me. I've got a job description. I compensate him a fair amount. That's got to be a part of the deal also. But then all the camps, his food, his, you know, video games, Christmas presents, clothes, school, school clothes, school supplies, yep. mm-hmm. all that stuff comes out Roth of his IRA. Roth, yeah, exactly. Now we can start doing all these investments. <laughs> yeah. All that stuff. So it's not just like money sitting there and they don't have to like have control of like my my son doesn't have control over this account that has thousands of dollars in it. Like, you know, he's 13. <laughs> he would not make wise decisions. Um, he would have all of the, um, the, like the fake money on his NBA 2K video game. He'd be like, I upgraded all of my sleeves and shoes or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, he just spent $14,000 on a video game. Yeah. Um, so we don't do that. But, you know, this is something that is legit. Now, when you have it, there is one little stipulation to look at with S Corp versus LLC. Um, if you have an S Corp, there's an extra like you're going to have to pay some some employee tax stuff. Like you oh, got okay. to look into that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But if it's an LLC, it's clean, and you just go, okay, my kid is my employee, and I can set them up, and and we're good to go. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if you've got five kids, my God, you've got almost a you know you're nearing a hundred k of, of tax tax lowering power there to, to hire them. And obviously if you got a three-year-old, you're not like, she is my social media marketing manager. Right. Like, <laughs> that's not a thing. But um, if you, I mean, the tips that are given to me, have a legit job description, have them do actual things, just be ready if the IRS comes calling and mm-hmm. pay them a reasonable comparable salary or income to where like if you were doing this or if you were hiring somebody or a va or something what would you be paying them per hour how many mm-hmm. hours are they working what are they doing and then you know have proof that so if they're helping you create social media videos or whatever like you got to be able to reference yeah. that there's the proof right there you can just yep. show them online yep yeah wow that's um super cool yeah so those, those are kind of the, that's the collection of my, my favorites uh, of tax planning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess that would be one final tip is you all need to understand the difference between tax prep and tax planning. Mm-hmm. So tax prep is an accountant. Like that's the person that you take your manila folder to and they file your taxes for you. They prep mm-hmm. your taxes. H&R Block. Yes. A lot of those people, most are not tax planners, tax strategists. They aren't thinking, mm-hmm. how do I save this person the max amount of money? Um, you know, like my right. accountant, my accountant didn't know the difference between a, a, a SEP IRA and a solo 401k. I'd explain it to him, you know, which I wasn't thrilled about, but it, it is what it is. I'm <laughs> like, Hey, no, this is, you know, cause he was trying to say I couldn't contribute 20, whatever thousand because a SEP is different. I go, no, this is a solo. It's different. You can, I, I made more money than this amount. I can do this. And he had to go look it up and he said, okay, you're, you're right. Uh, so, and, but wow. that, I guess that's just an example too, just understanding basics of taxes and some of this stuff can mm-hmm. save you a ton of money instead of blindly trusting that tax prep person who's got a stack of how, who knows how many manila folders mm-hmm. and right. they're rifling through that as fast as they can. Errors will be made. I think out of the last like seven years, I've had two years that I haven't caught an error from my guy. And wow. I mean, one of them was like thousands of dollars. He forgot to add in my quarterly payments. He, he filed my taxes as if I made zero quarterly payments. Oh, wow. Which I was like, how in the world do I owe this much money? <laughs> how do I owe this much money? I'm freaking out. And then we're digging through it. And he goes, did you file? Did you pay? do your quarterly payments? I'm like, yes, Jeff. I always do that. <laughs> so, so anyway. You know, but that's a tax prep. A tax planner is somebody that's going to think strategically and go, okay, yeah, you need to do a Roth instead of a traditional or vice versa or a solo mm-hmm. 401k versus a SEP. Do, are we doing the Augusta rule? Like really looking at how do we lower our taxable income as much as legally possible? Yeah, man, that's some awesome, awesome advice. And I, I mean, when I heard you, you know, you said, hey, I'm, I'm a tax nerd. I, I really love this podcast, blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah. I feel you, bro. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I like, I geek out on some of that stuff. So, um, it's always fun for me to talk, you know, talk about this stuff. I wonder how many people have fallen off the episode already, uh, cause they just can't <laughs> handle numbers and taxes and all that stuff, you know, but Hey, that's, that's, uh, that's their problem. So Forget uh, Forget this is, 
this is good information. Um, Adam, so uh, tell tell the people like where they can contact you. I mean, obviously you're not necessarily in print on demand, but uh, I don't know, maybe somebody wants to start a podcast. I don't know, just uh, kind of give them the rundown of what you do and all the things. Yeah, so uh, I appreciate you all that, that did stick with it here today. <laughs> um, my main hub is just the website, uh, podcastingbusiness.school. My podcast is Podcasting Business School. If you search Podcasting Business School or even just Podcasting Tips anywhere, that'll pop up. And Instagram is at Podcasting Business School. And I actually do, I have dabbled a bit in, in the, the the print-on-demand t-shirt business. So mm. uh, I make these shirts that say, your mom subscribes to my podcast. And <laughs> you can find those at yourmomsubscribes.com. Legit, like that's actually the URL that I own, yourmomsubscribes.com. Really? And I, I do quite well with those at the uh, the podcast events. So um, if you're a podcaster, hilarious. go grab it and tell your mom thanks. Yeah. You also have uh, one of our shirts. I brought you. Uh, oh, yeah. The yes. uh, podcasting professionals, uh, Guns N' Roses parody. Dude, I told you, I, I spoke at an event in Cleveland earlier uh, last week and everybody loved it they're like gnr <laughs> and like instantly recognized the logo and they thought it was so it was a content creator expo so um well, that's perfect yeah, yeah your, your 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 podcast professional shirt is a huge hit <laughs> that's awesome all right well adam thanks so much uh, again for being on the show and i i really do think this is really valuable information guys um you know, you might want to re-listen. You might want to take some notes. I'll put as much as I can remember in the show notes for y'all links and such. But um, yeah, thanks a lot for sharing all this stuff, Adam. Really appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thanks to all the POD listeners out there. I uh, appreciate you tuning in and supporting the show. All right. Well, that's it for the Print On Demand cast. Uh, until next time, we'll see ya. Hey, babe, thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Print On Demand cast. We hope you enjoyed the Totally Tubular show. If you've got a question or a suggestion for the show, send Travis and Josiah an email at info at printondemandcast.com. Want to be wicked nice? Take a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe now so you don't miss next week's episode. See you next time for sure.